all the mains, all the sprinkler mains go down the side. So this is common. We got a sprinkler main here, we got a sprinkler main here, we got a sprinkler main here, another main, and then that's a parallel with our trench line right there, you can see it. So when you put one of these systems in, when you have irrigation to deal with, it really adds a lot to the job. Now somebody put I mean, look at this. You know, it's some Home Depot crap. So it's cheap pipe with a sock on it. And we're here for a reason, because it didn't work. They didn't put enough pipe in the ground. They didn't put enough stone in the ground. We got a lot of job security because all the systems that are going in that are done wrong. So when you're shedding water off of a large patio like this, you end up with it being really soft around it. Not only that, but there's base material underneath this patio to lift it. After a rain, and you have all these expansion joints, all these cut expansion joints, water runs down into the base material. After a rain, for many days, this patio is just going to be leaching water. When you go around a patio like this, you do a curtain French drain around the patio, you grab up that water. Now when you step off into your yard, it's not saturated. We have a storm drain catch basin that we're taking this to. Whenever you run a system out to a storm drain catch basin, don't just end it at a pop-up. You have to remove the cover. You have to dig down the basin. You got to core and tap. You can't ask water to come up out of a pop-up, define gravity, and then go in. I see it all the time. People just put a pop-up. I realize that the core and tap is a little extra and you got to rent equipment or hire it out if you're DIYing. But you have to. You have to so that you can empty the water from the line. You got to dig down on these storm drain catch basins and you got to core a couple of feet. You got to go down a couple of feet and core through the sidewall. The yard is super flat right in here. It's extremely flat. That's why when the water would come off of this giant, you know, basically hardscape, when you have rains, it's a non-permeable surface. So you have all that surface area catching water, all the sheet water starts to be shed off this large concrete deck. Then, when the grade is real flat like this, the water has no way out. It just hangs around and just everything just gets saturated. The reason why the side of the house is so wet, the neighbor's grade is higher, so the water is shed to the swale. The swale is closer to the homeowner that we're working for. We're contracted through this home because he's the one experiencing all the water problems. When water is left to lie in turf grass, it can't find its way out. It's not like a cement surface or an asphalt surface where water sheds with 1% slope really easy. 1% slope is the absolute minimum that these developers are allowed. So everything has 1% slope on it if it was built in the last 45 years. Problem is turf grass needs 5% slope to get the water out of it, which that's not a reality. So that's why French drains are so common. So we're gonna take all the water that's shed off this high ground and there's downspouts, so those come out so you have the rooftop water off the house next door. You have all the groundwater that's not absorbed. This green belt will absorb a certain amount of water. But once that green belt is saturated, the water is going to run off and it's going to end up right in here where we ran that French drain. So we're going to tighten up the entire side of this house. 
we're going to make it so much easier to mow and maintain, homeowner's going to enjoy his yard a lot more. Super simple, the stuff, it's no big deal. I tell people when they buy new homes and then they discover that there's issues, and they need to put in a drain, don't worry about it, there's a solution. We tighten up this yard. What's amazing is we'll run this French drain right in this low area, this problem area. Remember, water always finds the lowest point, so that's where you wanna put your French drain. You wanna get it right in that low swale where the water always ends up. People are always asking me, hey, can you help me design my French drain? It's pretty darn easy, man. Just run that pipe through all your low areas. Just run it through the low areas and put it on 1% slope Get it to a ditch or a storm drain. And if you get so deep, you can't drain it to the ditch or storm drain. You put a pump system in, and the pump will lift the water up out of the trench and then inject it into the storm drain. And yes, that happens a lot. We got a lot of videos on pumps. I got a playlist. You go to the playlist in our channel. I got outdoor sump pumps in a playlist for you guys. All the jobs that required a pump system. You can see how deep the guys are getting. We've been running 1% slope. Up here the grade is flat. We don't have much pitch this way. We don't have any pitch that way to speak of. There's really not a nice crown to this yard like there should have been. That's how these yards end up the way they do. If you crowned them, then you're gonna trap water over here and it's gonna have a hard time getting to the storm drain. If you crowned it and you let it shed to the back and then you swell it back here, you're asking the water to come from the side of the house, down in the swaled area, and then there's this light swale. Well, 1% slope with turf grass, you're not getting the water out of it, and that's what these developers are allowed. Have a really nice French drain. You can see how shallow, now look at how shallow the guy started this French drain. Look at the elevation. It has slope. It's shallow. Like this part of the French drain, this part of the French drain, like the first few feet won't even have pipe in it because it's so shallow. Then you finally get to where you can put one pipe in. Then as they go, you can get two pipes. Then as it gets deeper, three pipes. Now when they come around here, they had to start digging down into the grade because there is pitch. So this gets deep. You can get four pipes in a really deep French drain system. We got to put this sprinkler system back together again. Anytime you're running a four inch anything, four inch roof runoff system, four inch French drain, you're going to have to work on the sprinkler lines. You can do a three inch French drain system if you're a DIYer, I encourage it. I'll do a video on that for you guys in time. Beautiful, beautiful work. The guys are on lunch. It gives me an opportunity to show you what this looks like. They did a really nice job. This is clay with big cobble rock. You can see the Michigan cobble that we're dealing with here. This is a tough dig. This tears a trencher up. This is the kind of soil that's just so hard on trenchers. Those big cobble rocks just destroy a trencher. Beautiful system. You see how shallow we are at the beginning. That's how you get more slope. You find it. You create it. If you stayed to the end, you're going to find out how you can check your slope on any drain system. Now, I want you to take a look at this storm drain. Imagine if you just ran a pop-up to the storm drain. This whole trench would be filled like a bathtub. If you just put a pipe in there with a pop-up on it and then filled it full of stone, it has to fill up and it's going to hold all this water before it overflows and goes into the top of the storm drain catch basin. Now, we cord the sidewall and we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a tap here. We're going to use hydraulic concrete 
to cement a piece of PVC Schedule 40 for a sleeve and for a sleeve only. And then we have our HDPE guaranteed not to crack, not to break. It's going to flex coupler, and that's going to go on that sleeve, that tap, and it's going to connect to the corrugated pipe. Now we drain the bottom of our drain system out completely because we went ahead and we tied in low on the storm drain. Now here's how you check if you have slope. Run a garden hose. When you're all done, run a garden hose and let the water run in the bottom of your trench. If your 1% slope is correct, you will not have these bellies, these bellies that just hold water. You'll have a nice flow. The water's just going to run down the bottom of your trench beautifully. If you want to check your 1% slope to make sure you got it right, make sure that you did it right, this is how you do it. Water runs downhill. It'll let you know if you have any negative slope. That's basically when you're going uphill. If something was wrong when you were using your laser transit, sometimes a laser transit just from traveling in a toolbox, it can get knocked you know, completely out of balance. And these things have to be sent in and recalibrated periodically. But we run a check all the time on our trenches. That way, if there's any issues, we can catch it early. And you can see that the water just runs down the bottom of this trench beautifully. No bellies, no ponding, no pooling. If you found this information helpful, give us a thumbs up. It supports the channel. I'm your host, Robert Sherwood. And until the next video.